firstly, a very good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A very warm welcome to all of you to this uh, Exchange for Media's ongoing series called Moments Made by Marketing, sponsored by Salesforce. Now, marketing for financial services in a digital first world where we explore how technology brands help create marketing moments and personalized experience. And that is what today's uh, discussion, the webinar is going to be about, where brands today aim to connect with consumers through hyper-personalized you know, messaging in an omni-channel environment, creating a moment made by marketing that elevates the consumer experience. In digital first world, even our financial services need to be there, right? How do we choose them? How does marketeers bring out those financial services to the forefront? The financial services sector is built on transparency and hinges on data and technology. However, the diluge of data available to a marketeer can impede marketing efforts. Hence, brands seek technology that offers real-time engagement, consumer insights, and hyper-personalization, which, of course, can help create agile solutions, offer seamless customer engagement across the service lifecycle. We have the stalwarts of the industry right here with me on this webinar. So I'm not going to say much right here, but introduce them to all of you as we will talk about today marketing of financial services in a digital first world. Joining us on this webinar on the panel, we have with us Mr. Alok Bhan, Chief Marketing Officer, Max Life Insurance. Very warm welcome to you, Mr. Bhan. Thank you very much. Very nice to be here. We also have with us uh, Mr. Subhashish Ghosh, Joint President and Head Institutional Business Marketing and Alliances, Kotak Mahindra Life Insurance. A very warm welcome to you, Mr. Ghosh. Thank you, ma'am. On the panel, we also have Mr. Lakshman Velyotham, Chief Marketing Officer, Ujjivan Small Finance Bank. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Good afternoon, Kathy and everyone, and thank you so much. On the panel, we also have Vishwajit Parashar, Chief Marketing Officer from Bajaj Capital. A very warm welcome to you, Mr. Parashar. Thank you, Kathy. Pleasure to be on this panel. Thank you. Thank you. Last but not the least, on the panel, we have Aniruddha Joshi, Director of Marketing Cloud from Salesforce. Very warm welcome to you, Mr. Joshi. Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for the warm welcome. Uh, happy to be here. And chairing this session, we have with us Ronita Mitra, Founder and Chief Strategist, Brand Eagle Consulting. A very warm welcome to you, Ms. Mitra. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy, and look forward to the discussion. Absolutely. Now, before I hand over uh, the session to you, Ms. Mitra, I want to urge all our viewers right here that the discussions will get enriched and you will benefit most from it if you keep asking questions. So while the discussions are on, we encourage you to use the Q&A tab on the screens and send us your questions. Ms. Mitra will try and, you know, kind of include all the questions possible during the discussion. So please go ahead and do so. And over to you, Ms. Mitra. Thank you, Kathy. Um, so we've all seen the world um, being a completely and altogether different place uh, from what it was since the pandemic has set in. And we've all witnessed massive shifts in the way we've been living our lives. We have seen that technology has leapfrogged by several years in the last few months and has actually been at the forefront of driving many of these shifts. This escalation in the adoption of technology has redefined marketing. It has redefined what brands need to do to strengthen themselves, or sometimes in fact, just stay relevant. Um, it has had deep and significant implications on how brands need to interact with its customers and deepen customer engagement. BFSI has always been one industry that has been ahead of the technology curve. In today's panel discussion, let's listen to and learn from the experiences and wisdom of some of the very senior leaders from the BFSI industry as to how they have taken technology to the next level to um, deliver personalized experiences and superior customer experiences. To begin with, uh, can I ask each one of you, all five of you on the panel to very quickly Talk about one key moment in the last 15 months that you have witnessed with your customer, which was a standout moment, completely unexpected, completely took you by surprise, and was a big learning 
as to you know the big changes that are about to come about that are, that are that are about to face uh, them and us so can i ask each one of you to quickly talk about one such key moment and then i'll come I'll, and then i'll ask the individual questions yes okay. alok would you like to go first i guess i'm sitting on the panel as on my screen is the first box so i'm just taking that opportunity uh, thanks a lot uh, well if i if i you know look at your question and say that one singular one stand out moment it is difficult for me to pick it up as a single moment because moments are many and one needs to identify a moment that really is the most relevant for the category that your brand is talking about and in our category which is life insurance uh, our our uh, our category is about the family it's about the family's protection for future financial protection and everything else so what we associate at least at max life with ourselves is how do we bring our category in relevance to family moments and make it relevant for the uh, for, for the for the consumer at at such now uh, ours is an emotional category so uh, it's all about trying to bring about a change in the perception of the consumers with respect to life insurance now historically life insurance has been a fuddy duddy old uh, talk about death talk about moroseness talk about what will happen to the family in the past but now with consumers changing and more importantly even now in the situation the data and technology becoming coming to fore with so much of information that we all get that we at max life and i think even at the industry and hopefully uh, subhashish will agree with me that we are changing the narrative from a uh, fear then uh, moving it towards a uh, happiness and making the category more relevant for the current environment this is not the india of the 60s and the 70s where we were going through various issues with respect to our own uh, own own country and as economic development we are no longer a developing country we are pretty much reasonably in the developed kind of a state and getting there so even we do realize that consumers narratives are not coming from uh, limitations but the today's consumer is reasonably well aware of his opportunities and he is not in the in the game of saying oh god what's going to happen to me this generation is pretty much uh, in a positive frame so our thinking is that family still anchors at least india pretty much so we need to be in the space where the family is going to associate their happiness with our category and hence make our category more relevant so i believe that uh, we want to use more depend on the life in life insurance versus the topicalities of death etc and the moment you start talking about family it is its relevance is towards happiness and it's towards a positivity so it's a half glass full than a half glass empty we have seen our loyalty scores and our engagement scores whenever we participate with uh, using the family events like let's say even events like diwali and holi and all these festivals where families get together to bring relevance of our category it comes in quite quite well we actually create uh, ronita sufficient number of conversation starters which helps our our sales teams to initiate a conversation at top of the funnel so it's a it's a way for addressing instead of using the regular old you know old examples of what if you don't come home tomorrow uh, i think that that era is over but making the breadwinner feel feel while feel responsible not feel burdened uh, that is where we have changed and we've seen sufficient uh, good conversation starters giving us giving our agents and our sellers reasonable amount of uh, entry into the houses of uh, of our, of our prospective consumers and customers very clearly progressive progressive outlook not towards the old age stuff not dis- not discussing death but discussing how your life can become better once you make plans as they say if you fail to plan you plan to fail so we are using those lingos to get our consumers to be ready for the future and frankly once you are ready then go and enjoy life so a plan b is what makes a plan a 
that much more beneficial. Live for your plan A, but have a plan B. And we used all those occasions to celebrate the the breadwinner in the occasions on family events. That's how we've seen a very good uh, uh, response from our consumers. Thank you, thank you, Alok. Um, very interesting family moments move from fear to positivity and happiness. Actually, enable the sales team with these insights to actually convert that into business opportunities. Um, Anirudh, can, can, can I request you to come next? And um, just a small request to all of you for this particular question, if we can just be a little quick about this particular question, because we have lots to cover so that our audience can really gain from this, uh, from this discussion. I would really like it to be as enriching as possible. Yes, Anirudh. Sure. So, um... I, again, I will not talk about a, a particular moment, but uh, generally a trends that I have seen uh, so far, I have whatever uh, discussions I have with my customers uh, if, during my conversations. So uh, if you ask me, the, the few trends that we see are more uh, related to, uh, you know, the general theme that uh, about these trends is that how can I be more contextual uh, or personalized in my uh, uh, in my interactions with the customers. So how can I be more relevant during the conversation that I'm uh, having? And in that sense, if you ask me the trends that I am seeing is, you know, how can I be more real-time proactive uh, in my conversations, uh, you know, being personalized. So that's uh, very important to me. Then other things that I have seen is that uh, the moments that matter, they're not necessarily digital only. They they are assisted as well. So these are coming out very clearly in our uh, customer conversations. Uh, third thing that uh, I want to see as a trend, uh, you know, uh, may not be a moment as such, but uh, in general trend uh, that marketers are asking us is that, you know, how can AI assist in some of these moments uh, that matter the most? Can AI help, in, uh, help us in delivering that right personalized content or right personalized messaging at the right moment in time. Thank you. Thank you, Anirudh. Very, very interesting, contextual, personalized, real time. And uh, I'll definitely come back to you so that to, on the on the bit about AI so that you can tell our audience more about how you've been leveraging, helping your customers leverage AI. Um, so Vishwajit, can I ask you to go next? Thank you. So uh, Bajaj Capital is you know, a financial distribution house uh, or since 1964, and we have an open architecture. Like we, you know, we help people achieve their financial goals through mutual funds, life insurance, bonds, all kind of products under one roof. And I would say uh, there are decades when nothing happens, and there are days when decades happen. So last two years, if I would really put it, and if I really come out with moments, there were two very important things which we have discovered. Uh, I want to take you back to uh, the month of April when there was a lot of hue and cry, panic, and people were down with COVID. So what we did, we proactively tried to sense the voice of customers, you know, what is it actually they are feeling? And we realized that they have, a lot of customers have taken MediClaim from us. So what we proactively did, we tried to connect it with them. We tried to help them with finding the right hospitals with oxygen beds, because there were a lot of fake messages that were floating, if you recall. and we set up, we did a setup, uh, you know, a proactively uh, help desk to, you know, guide in our clients as to how can they have a cashless medical facility, how can we on their behalf speak to TPAs, you know, connect with uh, health insurance providers, and, you know, you will not imagine, uh, you know, the kind of emotions were so high, and when we help them in during those times to get their medical reimbursements or to get them cashless reimbursements, they, the our NPS scores jumped from 17 to 30 in just in just one month we, we did the survey and the second thing uh, you know again the voice of customers people who were not down with COVID uh, they were in a very panic mode they they were you know concerned about the market volatility because of their portfolios they were not clear whether the and the feeling was that the country will is locked down so markets will close so what should we you know, what should we do we, they be doing with their money. So we, in a way, you know, and our industry is more to do with education and awareness because people normally trust financial planners like us with their hard-earned money. So we created a lot of, you know, awareness campaigns through webinars, 
we made them available mm -hmm. the top fund managers to discuss their portfolios portfolios were discussed and uh, thanks to you know our regulators you know there is something called digital onboarding which is called kyc or and in previous days it used to be kill your customers with lot of papers but now uh, uh, thanks to regulators it is a uh, digital onboarding is very very seamless process now so that is one thing which we started for new customer acquisition and to you know understand their thoughts understand their emotions we tied up with an a company called omni life where we try to help them understand their health issues uh, you know the trying to convert their pessimistic into optimistic mode to yoga teachers instructors best of the uh, you know people available in the market so that there is an, a regular engagement with our existing clients so broadly i would say those were the real testing times and a lot of moments not just one moment very interesting thank you so much vishwaji um very very interesting uh, you know proactive insighting and solutions for your customers and i'm going to come back to you for a little more discussion around the insights uh, and the moments actually um subhashish can we hear from you on life insurance we've already got one perspective of life insurance looking forward to getting another perspective from the same industry i'll tell you since you've asked uh, about one moment i'll tell you that one moment when the lockdown happened over a year ago and obviously uh, we were not and none of us were that ready digitally to serve all everything for the customer so for the reason for which they had to come to the branch we had to very quickly replicate and made sure that nobody ever needs to come to the branch so very quickly we went around it our nps course took a nose dive what we found out is that and which which probably instinctively now with hindsight we should have known india is a very high context economy here very high cultural context people want to meet people people want to talk and so one side is transaction the other side is advice transaction yes you can probably do online advice probably still people want to meet face to face so once we got that feedback and we could see it coming we had to had to scramble and open within the covid guidelines the government guidelines and our own situation the way it was we opened the branches for 2 hours a day 3 hours a day 4 hours a day to take care of the walkers because people wanted to come and talk to you in spite of whatever uh, whatever uh, whatever tools you gave them to service them online there was certain set of people who did want to come and talk to you and surprisingly it was not dependent upon age to think that it was the 50 plus who walked in was wrong uh, people of all types walked in people wanted clarification is covid covered uh, various types of clarification we wanted to yeah in critical illness is covid covered or otherwise also is covid covered or so many other question that we otherwise they hadn't thought about some people quickly got in their nominees to be adjusted you know probably when they took a policy the nominee was somebody else now maybe they are different so i think uh, the interesting part while we tried to give all digital tools and we did give the digital tools we we were interestingly enough found out that a lot of people did want that physical comfort of an eye to eye comfort so i think i cannot look too far in the future probably next 3 years maybe 5 years it will still have to be physical and digital but i don't think it is either or very interesting so while technology has pretty much really taken over our lives dominated our lives uh, the importance of the face to face interaction in india is uh, equally important and uh, yeah. i uh, and, and your point about the advisory the nominees was very interesting and i i'll probably come back to you once again on that when we talk a little more about customer journey um you know maybe you can talk a little more in detail about that um lakshman what about you on quickly on the on on any key moment that was a highlight so at ujivan small finance bank we primarily uh, serve the unserved and the underserved segment which is uh, which predominantly has seen the traditional forms of bank and with covid you no know, they were thrown in the world of the digital space uh, so what we realize is that you know we had to carry them with us uh, so over the last few years uh, we realized this challenge long back so we always combined financial literacy with banking in every aspect or any initiative that we did across the board moreover you know we moved to assisted forms of banking much early around 3 years back and we guided our customers and slowly segmented our customers understanding no which customer is willing to adopt the digital channel which requires more of uh, no assisted purposes and which requires branch format 
and this really helped us uh, during the covid period because uh, when the martech tools were introduced you know we could catch up on the early adopters very well and uh, and also in the process we streamlined many of our processes to make banking far more simpler so that we saw an uptake happening in the digital space in a very big way but as we go along we also realize that trust is an important factor for this segment so the physical as well as assisted as well as the digital form will continue to evolve in its various formats across customer segments and this is something that you know i will elaborate as we go sure thank you darshman very interesting but i think the most uh, interesting take out for me from what you just said is that you had even before covid you had proactively been uh, been working on some of the solutions assisted digital solutions for your customers going by the segmentation and i think that's a very important learning for many of us you know which is to constantly proactively keep working on uh, things um so from there can we let, let's look at some of the specific aspects of how technology has helped us take forward businesses in the last one year as uh, bhashish can i ask you to talk, talk you know with technology yes you did talk about the importance of face to face also but if we just focus on the technology side um you know technology does help in one aspect which is hyper personalization um and have you used omni channel communication to create personalized communication and personalized experiences uh, for your customers in any way yes that's precisely what we are doing and we are in a journey for that we are very cautious that uh, india is a large country not everybody is fluent in english so we are very clear that most of our communications now going forward and some of it has already started happening is in vernacular and uh, we are trying to figure out from which landing page is he is he or she coming to our web and can our uh, web be uh, can our website be responsive we haven't done it but we are on the way to see that then can the uh, website look and feel and even the images everything change to take care of the person from where he has come because going forward we are very clear about it vernacular voice video these are the three things going forward we have to be that person whom the person is most comfortable with we cannot put our values and our thought process and say look you have to be that the same thing you know we had to open the branches for two hours a day because people wanted to meet us they are my clients i can't tell him that sorry i can nudge but beyond that i have to be responsive to what she wants and the other thing is that uh the kind of uh, social media platforms there were normal five which everybody is which is facebook twitter linkedin instagram and so on and so forth customer can come to me she can come to me from any format she can she can write to me in instagram she can write to me in twitter she can put it on linkedin and i should be ready to respond to her in every which way i cannot say now you fill up this five page form necessarily i may guide her there but i should be able to respond to anybody in any channel Uh, all these modes of communication have to be put in together though your personality may be slightly different in each of these channels which obviously um, linkedin and facebook may not go in personality types but ultimately if the customer is asking i have to respond to that person in that way whatever channel she or she is most comfortable with very bashish because i think you know the very important thing that you have talked about is actually making technology human when you talk about vernacular voice video uh, it's not just about what works for the brand or the organization but it's really what will work for the consumer and therefore using technology to make yourself make your brand more familiar more accessible to the consumer by making it less intimidating more approachable more human um ma'am it's always the consumer it's always the consumer it has to be that we exist i mean all of us exist for the consumer we consumer doesn't exist for us we exist for the consumer and we make a big mistake if we think it otherwise absolutely and i think uh, thanks for reiterating that because i think in any marketing forum that is something that we need to keep reiterating uh, at every possible opportunity and uh, hopefully keep reminding that to the young audiences that would be listening in to all of you um alok now there has been quite a data deluge uh, since uh, over the last few years i would say but definitely in the last uh, few months um how have you used this data deluge to your advantage to possibly develop meaningful proposition solution services for your customers so very quickly i think uh, data is not something that's been of recent vintage it's been there with us for almost 10 12 years 
I would actually say that this time around, the data is identified as a new normal and data is the new oil, the way I understand it to be. And therefore for marketers like us, if we are still sitting on the creative landscape without understanding the data and becoming some sort of data scientists ourselves, then we are losing out on the moments that we are, that consumers are looking for. Uh, data is, is very important. Not only is data, but it's analytics is that much more important. Now at Max Life, uh, we've been on this journey for about 10 years. Way back in 2011, we set up a small function called the AI Works team. So AI as in artificial intelligence, and we embedded artificial intelligence uh, professionals in our core functions. So they could understand the business, not just come from data scientists and say, this is the way it's done, but contextualize the need for data. And uh, increasingly, we've been using the marketing analytics, the Google 360 stacks to, to create personas for our, for our own customers, because that's what you need to do to be able to efficient, to, to make your funnel that much more efficient. So I'll, I'll give you a few things that we did typically from uh, Max Life's perspective uh, on our marketing. And I'm coming from a marketing perspective. I'm not talking the operations and the underwriting. That's all data and everything else. So on marketing campaigns, uh, we check the campaign performance analytics using the tools there to decide where to spend our monies more. We would then also un in the various funnel do a drop off analysis to know when the customers have dropped off in their cycles and readdress them, uh, you know, personifying the, the new, uh, the, the area where they left to try and address their requirements from there itself. Uh, on the consumer side, we do analytics to understand what kind of products work for which segments using again, data analytics tax and everything else. Uh, on our online sales, mostly online, not so much on the offline side, but more on the online sales, we know exactly which funnel or which stage of the funnel did the customer drop. We know which media mix will work for a particular persona. And that, that's the way we define how do we address him again. We will not leave him alone. If he's dropped off, we will remarket to him. So the remarketing tools are all coming from data, data analytics that happen there. We do an A-B testing to understand where all can we uh, readdress a consumer segment. At the end of the day, the objective really, uh, Ronita, is to make our business more efficient. And we have been able to reduce our cost of acquisition on the online side, at least, by at least 30 to 40 percent by using data and by using marketing analytical tools. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if you know, if you don't know data, then you are out. I know India is a large country, but I'm, I'm actually surprised the pandemic made me realize that even the, uh, the mid to old age, I mean, my parents kind of uh, adults are adopting to technology. So f it's like almost like hand in glove. I mean, my father-in-law is fighting with me that please use Paytm, help me use Paytm, help me use uh, UPI. I don't want to go to the branch. So for me, uh, data is or digital is equal to, we call it DIY, I call it contactless. And that is what I think is a key part why in the pandemic times, contactless journeys have become the need of the hour. While I agree with Subhashish, uh, mostly that life insurance is quite digital instead of, uh, you know, digital only. But increasingly, if life insurance companies are not able to provide a complete digital journey, then we will lose out. Depends on the consumer. He wants to peel off and go back to physical. We should have that ability, ability available. Fascinating. So this is actually another lens to how you make technology human and accessible to consumers across uh, consumer segments, regardless of their profile, regardless of their age, and the biases completely drop about you know who who is can use technology and who cannot use technology, and fascinating how you're using technology for deep end performance marketing. You you're using yeah. analytics for deep end performance marketing to drive business. Um, Vishwajit, coming to you and coming back to your point around insights that you mentioned um, during the first round. Uh, how have you used marketing analytics, for example? Have you used marketing analytics 
uh, to actually develop, generate consumer insights and, uh, you know, develop solutions thereafter. Absolutely. So uh, I would say, let me throw some data because we're discussing data. So 90% of the data was created in last two years and 80% of the data is still unstructured. So I have seen the way the organizations have evolved. Uh, analytics was used to be R&D initially. Then it moved on to, you know, with big data, et cetera. And then finally, I think today we are in an insight uh, um, uh, economy kind of a thing where everything, whatever data you have, you need to have some insights. Otherwise, there's no use of data because in, in an organization like us, which is a, which are five decade old, there are a lot of data which is lying in silos. So how do we use that? How do we get insights out of that? So I think uh, what uh, Mr. Bahan also mentioned, so a lot of things, I think these are all, uh, every marketer tries to do that. How can we bring costs down, whether it is, uh, you know, new client activation. So you, do, you don't do, initially used to do bombard with emailers to your existing clients, all kind of products offers used to be used to share with them. But now you don't want to, uh, you only want to send relevant information and you know the personas of the client, the segmentation is clearly defined so that you know these kind of clients will not get these kind of mailers. In my case, you know, there are high net worth clients. So why to send them a small uh, product offering? And, and you are spoiling the experience. So within the organization, I think market forecasting, statistical, as to, you know, or whether it is called, you know, marketing mix modeling, whether which model, as Mr. Bhan was also mentioning, which media will work, which media will, will, will not work with this persona. So all these kind of uh, analytics are happening in, uh, I think, in organization so that we can evolve from a brick and mortar model to totally digital first organization where even if somebody enters digitally, we should know uh, the behavior, the intentions, the emotions as to uh, what is the client is that is seeking from a brand like Bajaj Capital and basis that the solution has to be done. And I completely agree, you know, data uh, is, is the core in the business today because ultimately, uh, you know, it's a financial uh, distribution house. So if you don't understand the sensitivity of the client's investment behaviors and you know uh, the sensitivities of the markets, you will not be able to advise. So there are platforms where you are coming to robo advisory models rather than just you know physical models. So everything is based on data, and then only you can survive in these kind of markets. So I would say whether you have to understand the client lifetime value, whether it is you know the, the way you engage, for everything else you need a data, and otherwise. Uh, the kind of experience you are going to give is not going to be what customers are expecting uh, from you because it is the same customer who is dealing on Amazon. It's the same customer who is dealing in all other kind of uh, you know consumer related uh, you know apps. So you have to have similar or wow experience. Wow experience is now a given. So you have to give, deliver something to differentiate that this is not what you know what you stand for and how you are more relevant in his life rather than just throwing. Uh, mailers or bombarding, you know, information which is not relevant for them. Very, very interesting because you know it's really overwhelming, and I'm sure for the audience, I'm, I'm sure a lot of the audience is in the same situation where, um, you know, it, where, when you say eighty percent of the data is still unstructured, which just kind of highlights the extent of work, the enormity of work that's lying ahead. And uh, fascinating when you talk about the wow moment because now technology is par for the course. Uh, how does each brand, therefore, what does it need to do to do that delta, you know, that very insightful delta to create the wow moment for uh, consumers? You know, can't, can't just do what everybody's doing. Uh, huge challenges to really deep dive and get insightful. Okay, that's enough from me. Uh, Anirudh, I think what's coming out is that at the core of all this technology, you know, deep end use of technology and uh, something that we cannot do without, uh, AI is at the core. Um, of a lot of the inciting. So uh, how have you uh, been, uh, can you give us some examples of how AI and ML could be used for sharper decision making and customer engagement? Sure. Um, so I'm going to build upon the answers given by Mr. Bhan and uh, Mr. Parasha, right? So it was, uh, it is really important that you have that data and AI, sort of builds on top of it. Uh, without data, AI is nothing, it's not possible. And generally, when we speak about AI, we have this notion of a self-driving car and we'll put some automation on it and then automatically things will start happening. Uh, 
well, that's that may not be the reality of the AI. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about very practical <clears throat> practical things that are happening in AI <clears throat> for marketing uh, reasons at least. So when you look at AI, you can't just uh, uh, you can't just say that uh, you know uh, how I am going to uh, or rather what is uh, what is the automation that I'm going to achieve with AI? It will be always in these discrete components for market, uh, marketers, right? It is supposed to assist the marketers. So what we at Salesforce are doing is that we have uh, we are using AI with these discrete components in our tools so that it assists marketers to take better decisions or to give better personalization or to give uh, you know, right contextual communication at the right uh, right time. So do, these are the things that we are doing. So now, uh, if I if I have to divide divide that into like two three areas, I would say that one of the areas in uh, marketing where uh, AI is assisting. It, let's say if, if you are an operations manager and you are your job, your daily job is actually to execute campaigns every day, day in day out, uh, and you are running ten or fifteen campaigns a day then it is your job also to monitor how the campaigns are performing. Can I assist the operations manager? Can I say that, uh, you know, uh, you out of the 10 campaigns that you were running, these two campaigns did better or and these three did not. So you might want to reallocate your uh, budgets, uh, exchange those budgets, et cetera. So can I assist the marketer? So that's one type of AI uh, where it gives you these insights that uh, Mr. Parashar was talking about. The second one is uh, related to, let's say, uh, design or design better campaign. So give a better, uh, uh, better, uh, let's say, personalized communication uh, to the uh, to the audience. Uh, and example for this would be like, you know, which are my segments that are performing better? Can I can I get some insights automatically through an AI engine, which can tell me, you know, these segments are performing better, or uh, can it give me an uh, can it give me a, a, a data set where it says that you know a segment of population is actually uh, converting better so all these kind of insights i should be able to get the third type of ai is more like a uh, so this type of ai was more like an advisor it is trying to help the marketer in designing better campaigns the third type of ai is more like a decision system so where i have a list of attributes about all my customers. Let's say I have, uh, uh, Mr. Ban was talking about data and attributes. Uh, Mr. Parashar also talked about it. So I have this uh, attributes of my customers. How can I use those attributes to decide which offer uh, to give to that customer at the right point? I don't have to sit and decide, okay, this is my segment. I'm going to use this offer for this segment. Can the AI automatically take those decisions? So these are the types of AIs that are available within the Salesforce ecosystem, and uh, these will improve in the in the future. And for that, data is important. So the marketer doesn't have to be a data scientist; he just has to use the right AI tools to you know uh, deliver the right contextual messaging. Is what we are trying to do. I'm sure that's a huge learning and a huge of huge help for the audience that's listening in on how uh, you know AI can actually make a big difference on how they are doing their day-to-day -day business. Uh, thanks for that, Anirudh. Um, Lakshman, uh, you you know, given your business and the customer profile that you have, where you talked about you know the really the underserved segment of the um, of the market um, through last year, given the high dependence on technology. What kind of challenges and barriers did you face with in trying to shift them towards technology? Oh, uh, and, and therefore a better and therefore a more seamless uh, experience with you, you know? So with the onset of pandemic one, you no, know, we, we did reach out to all our customers, you know, explaining them. I mean, we were very clear from day one that you no, know, when we are offering banking services, it goes along with financial literacy plus anything that the customer uh, needs to know. So with the onset of COVID, we reached out to all our customers. We spoke to them about COVID. We had EMI monitorium. We spoke to them. We educated them. At the same time, we offered them alternate channels. So for example, you know, we, we, we tied up with, uh, uh, we had our own outlets, our branches. Uh, we tied up with local retailers to enable them go into the shop and pay online. 
We introduced them to internet and banking services. As Subhashi mentioned, we also, all our communication is in vernacular. So anything that we do is in 12 languages across the board. So currently, you know, we had, we developed videos uh, on production services and basics of banking. You know, the fact that you can use an ATM, you know, and our internet and mobile banking is equally in 12 languages. So we encourage the customers you know, to start uh, you know, looking at these alternate channels across the board. And also, you no, know, we, we have tied up now, you can do your payments through all other alternate digital platforms that are available. So, for example, recently we did a campaign, you know, we, we saw an uptake of uh, you know, close to around 2x in terms of the number of customers adopting to digital transactions. And, and during the COVID, we saw a 3.3.5 times increase in UPI use of UPI across the board. Okay, so what we realize is that, you no, know, it is important to listen to the customer and see what is it that the customer is willing to adopt to. It is like, you no, know, I, I, it takes me back to the time when Geo got introduced. Okay, and, and uh, there was a surge in terms of adoption of digital channels in the semi-urban and the urban segment. And that's the segment we primarily cater to. Uh, is there any challenge? You can't hear me? No, no, we can hear you. We can hear you, go ahead. So, uh, so there the customer learned ways to you know, adopt to the digital platform. So what we realize is that you, know, you need to give a good reason for the customers you know, to, to reach out to them. And when you introduce alternate options, customer do tend to pick up these channels and you know, do their payments, especially when it comes to EMI payments. We have seen customers you know, willing to go that extra mile and you know, adopt those digital platforms, you know, use even Bharat Bill Pay Service where required you know, to pay on the EMI. So, of course, in some in some segments, uh, we have had to assist them through our sales force. But uh, what we have realized is that a little of guidance and a willingness to listen and understand their issues and provide relevant solutions has really helped us. And these numbers which I quoted are primarily because of a, a collaborative effort of combining uh, physical and assisted forms to leverage the digital space in a big way. And also, we realized that you know, the fact that when we introduced a 7% savings account, um, we, we reached out to those customers uh, through our MarTech tools where you no know, it was an automated campaign. We, we reached out to customers, asset customers, we reached out to our FD customers, you know, asking them you know, to, to uh, you know, use the digital uh, medium and to uh, invest, invest their savings with Ujivan. And we saw a tremendous upsurge happening out there in a very big way. So you need to give the customer a reason. And, and the customer is more than willing to listen to you and also uh, you know, adopt to these digital channels in a very big way. So big learning from what you're saying, Lakshman, is how empathy is at the core of building your brand. Empathy and connecting with the consumer via what works for the consumer and, uh, you know, using technology, therefore, to bridge that gap. Uh, very, very important. Um, and so thanks. I think that's a, that's a very important uh, learning. So, Ronit, um, I want to add yes. uh, some perspective. Sure. Uh, Bajaj Capital being a brick and mortar model uh, from you know almost uh, four decades. So uh, during this COVID times, we realized that you know this physical will not work. So you and you got get ready for you know technical digital experiences. So now what we call as high tech or high high tech and high touch. So you know the same centers, two fifty centers, are now more of an engagement centers with clients. And transactions normally to get the scale and cost efficiencies is tech enabled. So idea is technology will enable you cost efficiency and scale, whereas the engagement centers or the relationship managers are to empathize with clients and to build that relationship, continue with that relationship so that the digital plus digital experience continues. Otherwise, just one channel may not be good for everyone. So you have to have a mix of a hybrid approach uh, to, to to, to our clients like in India where, you know, don't understand 100% uh, digital or 100% physical. So we need to have both the channels and all the channels, majorly two, three channels, we need to focus what customers need you. We, you need not have all the channels open for him because sometimes we realize that those channels are not even be, being approached by clients. So focus on two, three channels and give that ultimate experience. I think that is what the key is. I think some of the things that are, that are, that are come through so far is um, you know technology how it can be a powerful uh, 
of powerful mm -hmm. assistance or an enabler. Uh, however, you know, we are still in a world in India where we cannot ignore the physical aspect and therefore we have to balance out. It's not about either, you know, going from an extreme of the, um, the, the culturally aligned physical uh, that we are as Indians. It's not about being completely physical or completely, you know, going the high end of technology. But I think what all of you have brought alive is technology being a very powerful enabler, playing a very powerful role of assisting marketeers, assisting consumers, but also it's got to be a blend and balance of technology and personal and physical. Uh, so, so Bhashish, in that context, you were also mentioning advisory, you were also mentioning uh, this balance. Uh, is there any aspect of the customer journey where you know you have uh, managing the customer journey is very critical to deliver a superior customer experience? So what aspect of that customer journey have you seen, uh, have, you know, which has been of great challenge? You were mentioning advisory for earlier. Is there anything else? Or would you like to build on advisory more? Sorry, I was on mute. Yeah. As a life insurance company, uh, we what do we do? We come and approach you and you tell us, we ask you that let's take care of your financial planning for the next 20 years. Now you understand in the case of pandemic when there are job losses or if at least the incomes of people have gone down. At that time, if I come and tell you, can you commit to me a new policy for 20 years? Uh, you will have you will you you will require a lot more understanding, and I'll also require a lot more understanding of you and your needs and your disposable income for me to give you a genuine advice which is right for you uh, as a customer. So uh, so therefore that requires trust. Ultimately, advice has to be based on trust. You have to be trusting me with the details. I and you trust that I will give you advice that is good for you and not necessarily good for me. And and trust is a bit difficult to build up. In a long term, um, uh, 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 remotely, at least so. See, if it's a journey, then it is fine. You know, over a period of time, you build it up and people move from physical to virtual, it's fine. But suddenly there's a break. You can't develop trust suddenly overnight. <laughs> transaction, as I make a distinction between transaction and advice, transaction certainly will do overnight. People moved from UPA, everybody started paying through that, they scanned and did all that. But trust doesn't come. It's difficult. See, I can give you information. So we did a lot of webinars. In fact, uh, if you really want to know, one of the things that we did, we got our advices that since you are not able to speak to people, you call them over. So we had webinars of 12,000, 12,000 people. And then geographies were broken. You know, we had people from in, in NRI staying abroad who were stuck or people who were stuck abroad. That time they were free during the day or evening as the case may be. And we did webinars where we talked about certain products of ours. It was now... Uh, geography was history. So you could talk to people across and you could have your three best um, trainers or speakers or conceptually right person speaking to 12,000 people across the country instead of, so advisors brought in people in a webinar format and we addressed them countrywide. The trick part was how did you close the deal there? He has understood. How, how do you then explain to the person after that? And how do you then ensure that the advice that you get is the right advice? And there, honestly, I think people struggled. Uh, I think it was not so easy. So it took time. It is still taking time. But I think everybody's story story now getting used to it. Like this, this discussion would have never happened uh, two years ago. It would have happened uh, in real life, uh, in reality. Now we are very used to it. So people will get used to it over a period of time. And it's the journey that we are talking about. So yes, 100%. The advice um, over time will shift to a little bit to a, it'll be a gradual journey. I don't see it'll be overnight. And it's certainly, at least I'm, I'm only seeing the next three years, beyond three, four years, very difficult for me to kind of say what will happen in the future because future is ever changing. And if you see the speed, so we don't know what will happen, uh, whether the products will get simpler, that is easy. Complex products, whether people will understand it so well, or do you have videos? Uh, you know, which almost talk to you like a human. You know, they can answer whatever question you want. The person uses the tone, the English, the skin color, which is a person you normally will associate yourself with. And then you almost feel as if you are looking at a genuine human being who's answering your questions genuinely as the case may be. Then that journey would be interesting in going forward. Right. So it was really baptism by fire through last year. And, uh, but anyways, the consumers have only been the gainers with all of you working so hard. Thank you. 
if, I may, if you don't mind, if I may just add to what Subhashish was saying, it's a very interesting uh, uh, aspect that is picked up, you know. Uh, and I heard people talk about uh, merge journeys and digital and physical or the digify or the digital and everything else. All those are pretty much uh, terminologies everybody is using. But in our industry, which is an industry that is based on trust. See, we're talking about life of people 20 years, 25 years hence. When like Subhashi said, I can't even say anything about three years forward. We're making promises for 20 years. And therefore, how do we get a consumer who in any case is in a bit of a doubtful mind with respect to life insurance? We talk about trust and the life insurance industry has faced issues of trust for the last so many years. So in this journey, how do you get to that trust quotient is the challenge that has been there. In our experience as well, we all move from face to face to what we call edge to edge, from F to F to edge to edge, which is home to home. Now you can keep skilling your agents. You know, the profile of our agents in the industry are mostly housewives, retired professionals, the successful ones to bring them and make them more digitally aware and amicable to digital stuff. And also then for customers to agree to move from a face-to-face -to, -face to a webinar or to a Zoom call. I mean, Zoom has become the most important uh, often used word with the, with the entire family now, has been a challenge. I'm not saying that we haven't been successful or anybody hasn't been successful. 60-70% of conversions have happened digitally. But at the I would say that as the first drop of a hat, the moment unlockdowns happen, we come back and go back to our older ways of doing things because we are just more comfortable meeting people. We are frankly social animals, right? You can keep on saying social distancing, but that impact is not so much there. Uh, it will improve. I don't think some, some muscle that has been built up will not go away, but I hope not that we need a few more lockdowns to make this more, uh, more, more, you know, permanent. But I think uh, life will change, is changing. I think Subhashish is being uh, very, uh, you know, futuristic by saying three years. I can't think about three months ahead right now. Uh, like just the way we all got caught in the wave two, we may get caught again in wave three. Uh, hoping not, keeping fingers crossed. So uh, the net net answer to be for me is that data, again, coming back to that core point, data and technology is actually the data is actually the beacon of trust because the proof of the pudding of what you are, how does trust happen? If there is a proof of what you are saying, you are promising is going to get delivered. That's how trust trust happens. And the only way I can prove in a typically in a, in a, in a, uh, you know, a, a non personal environment is through data that look, I told you, I will be able to provide you this, service, here is the data providing you that service. For example, uh, at Max Life, uh, we have a very important, uh, not for the industry, a very important metric is the claim paid ratio. How many, what percentage of your claims that have come on you have you paid, right? And I'm bringing this topic obviously because Max Life is leading in that. The regulator doesn't allow us to say number one, but yeah, we are, we are leaders in that. So we have the marketing team has coined a term called Bharose ka number. Now, again, the Bharosa is that you make a claim. We will, we are giving you the fact that we will honor your claim. And then the data comes back and tells us, yeah, 99.35% of the claims value wise made, we have paid. Now that's what builds trust. So the so data very, very critical to even prove trust. I leave the last line by saying data for a marketer must tell a story. Pure data has no relevance. Data has to tell a story which can connect with the consumer and thereby build the brand and solve for the consumer. Pure pretty much adding to Subhashish's point only. So I think both of you uh, collectively have actually answered one, a very important point about how uh, we can use technology to just go beyond transaction, Correct. go beyond the mere transactional efficiency to actually building a very 
relationship and, and actually touching what matters to the consumer, which is connecting with stories, connecting with insights and building trust. Because finally, that's at the heart of the relationship between a brand and the, and the customer. Uh, thanks for that. So that very, very important. Um, Anirudh, I think what, what's come about is uh, undoubtedly the, uh, you know, the, the whole uh, surge in data generation and technology. How have you been advising customers and the industry in the adoption of cloud to manage this whole surge in data and maybe in decision making? So, um... One thing uh, that I must, uh, uh, the adoption of cloud for Salesforce actually is not a problem because uh, Salesforce uh, as a company, if you, uh, it, when we started the company, it started in cloud. Uh, we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, we have, uh, I think, uh, been doing this for 20 odd years now. Uh, so cloud as a adoption, when we are uh, talking about uh, data and the volumes of data, uh, that is what is driving the cloud adoptions today. So uh, if you uh, look at some of the trends that I am seeing in the, in the, in the cloud adoption uh, in terms of the uh, what is driving really, it's not necessarily only the pandemic that is driving this cloud technology or cloud behavior or uh, you know people adopting cloud. It is more to do with, also to do with in fact, uh, inno uh, innovations that are uh, being done uh, on the cloud technology, uh, the agility that the cloud technology brings in, right? So uh, uh, the agility to transform uh, things. So it, it had the cloud technology not been available uh, last year, would have been really very difficult for people to uh, people to adapt to. Now, uh, if you uh, if you look at uh, the last year itself, right? So from the uh, cloud technology adoption perspective, um, uh, we looked at people who uh, were working remotely as well, right? So people wanted to have access to the right data at the right points in time. Uh, our employees were working uh, working away from home, uh, working from home. The accessibility of the system itself was some of the driving behavior to the, to the cloud, right? So the adoption of the cloud started increasing because of that as well. Uh, now with cloud technology also uh, what happens is there are some uh, some concerns that about data security and uh, things uh, things that are related to data security but during pandemic what has happened is that many people are now um, uh, now much more uh, much more uh, open to you know accept that as a as a technology that is what is is the change that i have I have seen in the adoption of the cloud behavior. So all this points, uh, large data sets, different innovations that you are bringing in, uh, faster things that you are doing, are driving this cloud adoption for us and uh, for many of uh, the financial services organizations that I see. Wonderful. Thanks for that, Anirudh. Um, coming to you, Lakshman, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, for everything that we do, measuring ROI and effectiveness of um, all our activities and programs is very critical. So uh, have, ha have you been able to use technology or has technology helped you in really measuring ROI or effectiveness? Has it been possible at all to measure ROI and effectiveness given the pace of, ch pace of change uh, through last year? What have you experienced? Uh, one is when it comes to the acquiring customers, our entire process is digital, fully digital. Okay, so so one is you no, know, you make paperwork lesser. Second is you look at the different life stages. What is the customer journey in this entire process? For example, we just introduced a program called Ajivan, which is life event based banking services. So let's say right from birth, and when you are a minor to a major, then you get married. Uh, maybe an unforeseen circumstance such as a divorce or maybe death. You know, the point is, uh, uh, if you don't have a nominee on your account, you know, later on, when you need to operate these banking services or even the basic savings account, it is going to be a challenge for any of your family members. So when you, when you look at metrics, you know, how do you introduce metrics and how do you measure in terms of making banking simpler and convenient for your customers? So... No, before introducing this program to the customers, no, we generate this through internally. 
and ask ourselves, you know, how many of our employees are aware? We built awareness programs. You know, we we uh, 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 re-looked, re-engineered the entire processes completely so that it's far more easier for the easier for the customer. And right now, uh, from what we were to pre-COVID levels today, uh, close to 90% of the customers that we acquire automatically sign up on the nominee. So making the entire banking process far more efficient and better. And even in terms of all these services, you know, our average that has improved you know, up to around 90%. So the idea is that how to look at those metrics which directly impact the customer's life. Well, there are many, many metrics to measure and those are equally important. But when it comes from a customer-centric point of view, you know, does the customer leave the bank happier? At the end of every intra interaction or a transaction, does he feel better that, okay, you know, I feel better banking with Uchi? Because our mission is very clear that we are into the business of building better lives, which means that when a customer builds a relationship with Ujjivan, it is all about realizing their dreams and aspirations. Of course, every set of, you no, know, there are challenges from time to time. The point is, are we conscious enough to work towards, you no, know, identifying what are the bottlenecks and, you no, know, seamlessly working towards, you no, know, removing them. So this is an ongoing process, which means that, as I mentioned earlier, you have to be in a continuous engagement with our customers. For example, which which either comes with inputs from the sales team through our research and through many months. So one metric is, you know, you ask your customer, you know, how satisfied are you? Okay. While there are like uh, we have still not got into you know net promoter score and otherwise, but you no, know, we have regular checks on a quarterly basis with our field team to assess, you know, how is the customer feeling about the entire process. And, and we look at, as I mentioned earlier, we have started now looking at different customer segments and trying to understand what are their needs, basis their lifestyle and lifestyle, and then pick up certain metrics and you know, measure them because you can't be measuring all of the metrics. So that's the direction that we are taking. Very interesting. So not necessarily do what the entire industry is doing just because everybody is talking about NPS, not necessarily that has to be relevant for everyone, but you pick up the selective metrics which are actually important for building your relationship with your customer and taking business forward. Uh, very, very relevant. Um, Vishwajit, finally coming back to you, um, since you were so keen to talk about moments when we started off, um, you know, all this finally boils down to uh, what has really worked. I mean, there are challenges. We have to, uh, uh, you know, come to a blend and balance. A uh, lot of things have worked well. A lot of things have been learnings, not so well. Can you talk about anything that has really worked very well for you and therefore helped you in creating memorable moments for your customer? So, yeah, so I think uh, we, since we're talking about data analytics and, you know, NPS scores and, you know, the kind of experience during the pandemic time people have experienced through, through our brand. So uh, we did some data analytics and we realized that a lot of people are retiring and there is no tool uh, which is available to help them which is called distribution phase. So there are tools available. If you go to Google, how do you, how should you plan for your retirement? And you know there are, there are tools which will tell you that you should, you must save this much month, every month, or for that much amount, and you will create this much of corpus. But if somebody is retiring at sixty, and during pandemic time he is no way connecting to any relationship manager, so we we realized mm -hmm. that there is a need for that kind of a product. So we came out with a tool which helped retirees to plan their retirement corpus, the superannuation funds. And you will be surprised, 90% of the people do not have a written retirement plan in our country. So they are just living ad hoc life and they're not realizing if they're retiring after 60, they might live till 100, 40 years. That is what we are made for. We, we spoil our lives through bad lifestyles, but ultimately we're expected to live 100. And so we came out with this research and during this pandemic time, we came out with a tool which is helping people to get a written retirement plan during this pandemic time. So now they have a now they have now they can visualize next 40 years as to how will how much regular money they are going to get, which instrument they have to invest, and what are uh, so know how of all the products where they can invest. So I think Bajaj Capital is now going to focus purely on this segment because we realize that this is an untouched segment and people are you know. Uh, People are not aware about, they're not financially literate as to what to do with their superannuation funds. So I think this, this during these times, we have learned a new business opportunity because of data analytics. I think this is what is very, very making us very, very special. And we are acquiring new customers' business. So entire model now 
So there is a tool, there are webinars, there are you know collaterals to support. And last thing, you know, what uh, Subhashi was also mentioning, we need to be transparent to get that trust. Trust cannot be bought, it has to be earned. So more transparent you are, and how do you give that relationship experience which you are giving through physical online? I think if you can develop that online uh, boarding, uh, you know, or online relationship with the clients, I think that is where uh, the key is. So both the channels can work, hybrid approach will also work, but they both can be independently also working and can get businesses for the organization. Thank you, thank you, very interesting. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, uh, there are two questions that have come from the audience. Um, so I'm going to pose the question to the entire panel and uh, you know, y'all can choose who wants to answer. Uh, the first question is, which tools can you recommend for analyzing data of leads and existing customers? Alok, Subhashish, would you all like to handle this? Or Vishwajit, since you would be handling a lot of leads as a distribution house. I, I leave it open to you all. So each each company will have its own tool. Uh, and I wouldn't really want to talk about the brand because that's like promoting some brand. But yeah, I mean, all of us have a tool, would have a, I mean, we have to definitely, I'm very sure Alok and Vishwajit's company also will have a robust tool where first of all, it starts with capturing the lead. Uh, you capture the lead, then to which channel it goes to. Yeah, but it could, could lead could come from an existing client. It could come from a brand new prospect. So there would be a CVM. There will be a separate team that will then allocate the lead. Because in life insurance industry, if somebody is getting a lead, uh, because the original uh, the customer could have come into a particular channel through an agent, if that agent is live, the lead should go to that person. That's very important. You can't give one person's lead to another person. That will create channel conflict and agency conflict. So that is the first step that you will do. And then, of course, you rigorously follow up to see whether you know the, the lead is correctly followed up or not at which stage. So each company will have a defined own stage, stage one, stage two, which is defined. What is stage one? What is stage two? What is stage three? That we clearly defined as a part of the training process. And finally, either the lead will be dropped, it's possible if you not go through, or it'll be in cold storage for a while, and then you again have to revive it. Uh, maybe the person was just fishing for information. And then, of course, there could be closure. Uh, of course, you have to be very fast on leads. If somebody is calling you online or talking, you should reach that person immediately. That's what some companies, particularly web, web aggregators, they do it extremely well. Even when you're searching online, you almost get a phone call to say that, how can I help you in your journey and how can I help you close the sale as it were? So that's what we do. I'm sure every company must be doing. Alok can, uh, I'm sure, talk about his company. They, the and turnaround I'm, time, I'm, what you're saying is that the turnaround time is extremely important. Yes, yes, very From important. They contact to the time you get back. And I think Alok, in any case, had mentioned earlier about, you know, the various stages of the funnel. Uh, not just acquisition and lead, but you know, managing the various stages of the funnel with a uh, deep dive performance marketing. Alok, would you like to build on this, <laughs> on this answer, on this question? If you talk about a uh, tool, I would think uh, like, like Subhashi said, I won't be able to give you a specific name, but all of us have our own CRMs. Mostly that CRM is the main thing that picks up the lead from various uh, parts of the system and then keeps it captured. I will leave the answer to the tool to Anurud because then he can certainly talk about some tool from uh, Salesforce. And certainly after the call, we can discuss whether it makes sense and then whether we should adopt or adapt that. But yeah, see the, my experience in business has been that for sellers, if you give them uh, leads and you will call them qualified leads or a cold lead or a hot lead, et cetera, uh, I, uh, I don't know whether sellers, they love, they love to want a lead, but they do a one call on the lead and if the lead doesn't pick up, it becomes a cold lead. So your CRM systems have to be able to give the supervisors sufficient feedback that this particular lead has not yet been approached or has been approached in a very flimsy manner. So our systems come up and say, yeah, this lead has been has been met first time after five days, let's say. Now, if you meet a lead after five days, the lead from hot has already become cold or from cold has already become frozen. So we measure through our lead management systems that how long are you taking? To Subhashish's point for channel conflict, we do also put in systems that if it's a lead that's been given to channel A, 
and if the channel a has not done its due diligence on the lead till let's say day x then day x plus 1 that lead moves out of his channel and is given to another channel because for the enterprise that consumer is relevant is important we will keep on trying with him till we do a good connect at the same time data will come back and tell us this lead has been met through four times over there have been four responses by the consumer and he keeps on delaying his decision that data will tell us drop the lead because then it is more money being wasted it over on on that consumer but and that goes back again to define what's the right persona that we should focus on for our leads and makes our acquisition cost pretty pretty low so we have identified personas through all data analytics on leads that happen in how many approaches what kind of customer what persona responds faster to our proposition or or what proposition is meant for a particular persona so like you talked about retirement viswajit and i was thinking of telling you man leave something for insurance companies also the retirement is a very insurance company product but yeah we are very clear that our products at what age do we enter retirement retirement conversations like subhashi said uh, sorry viswajit said 60 years we don't enter at 60 we enter at 45 because we, our products are 15 year 20 year so we call them the pre retirement segment acquisition yeah yeah accumulation happens at 45 so those kind of things happen i guess uh, i mean everybody who's done business can talk and talk and talk about leads sellers hate the idea of leads because they think it's pressure on them and hence it's more important to give them qualified leads if it suits them fine if it doesn't then it any case goes into a wasteful funnel right so um, monica uh, may i interrupt so, yeah. i was going to say okay we just have three minutes so you have exactly yes. one minute so that i can do a wrap wrap, wrap up for in the final two minutes so i think well, in a nutshell i, I was just say, going to say that you know i am biased but you can use salesforce <laughs> and i think what i was going to leave you out of the answer because i think everyone can get in touch with you offline and i think there is also been opportunity uh, collaborative opportunities that have emerged on this call between alok and vishwajit and subhashish and future and uh, you know lakshman you can you can figure out who you want to collaborate with so <laughs> yes. i'm about to add that you know in our organization it is said chai thandi hone se pehle call ho jani chahiye otherwise it goes waste and there is concept called uberization in every organization nowadays so it, if somebody is not taking the call seriously it has to be transferred to somebody else and we have used salesforce and we sell kotak also and we sell max also <laughs> okay <laughs> wonderful so basically one can't do without bajaj capital and i'm glad you you know because you, yeah yeah often on this conversation of kotak versus versus max life please you know vishwajit has basically ensured that he's completely indispensable and this panel would not have been complete without him okay point taken and anirudh i'm deliberately leaving you out of any lead tool kind of question because it would just completely hijack this panel discussion <laughs> for the entire audience segment anirudh is here from salesforce if anyone wants to get in touch with him uh, okay. offline so very very uh, so, you know, you're giving him leads now <laughs> you're giving anirudh leads <laughs> that's true that's that, that, he was so keen to speak that this was the only way i could avoid him from speaking <laughs> so uh, okay i think we just have the final one minute to go and i i you know the audience uh, i'm i'm echoing this uh i'm sure on behalf of the audience um it's been one of the most enriching panel discussions the diverse perspectives which have come from all of you and you know i the, the whole strategic perspective to what technology can do and the role that technology can really play in taking your business forward and strengthening your brand and deepening customer engagement in times that we're living in which is changing so fast and so rapidly i think we have got a lot of a lot of insights a lot of knowledge and a lot of wisdom from this discussion but the but one of the most some of the most important things that stand out for me is that it's not an either or world it's not a black or white world yes the dependence on technology has increased manifold it has leapfrogged but it's really got to be a blend of technology and the face to face it's got to be about technology being human it's got to be about technology 
uh, being a very powerful enabler when it comes to driving productivity, efficiency, and every other aspect of business. However, it's got it's also got to be about technology, data, delivering the end game for any brand, which is to develop trust with its customers. Because finally, uh, no matter how efficient your transactions are, and no matter how much you contact the customer before chai can be ho jai, but you know, finally, it's really got to add up to building trust because finally that will develop the long-term uh, sustainable relationship with customers. Very interesting because we've got, uh, we also got a lot of insights from different aspects of different facets of financial services industry and uh, businesses that are covering different customer segments from Lakshman's underserved customer to you know the to the life insurance which has again a huge wide spectrum to um bajaj capital again you know dealing with finance intermediaries to b2c uh, having anirudh with a b2b perspective i think we have just uh, had covered as much perspective as could be possible in any discussion thank you all very very much thank you Rona. Thank, thank you for thank you thank you everybody thanks thank you Thank you. Thank you to all our panelists for your time and insights. And thank you, uh, Ranita, for uh, steering this very interesting conversation and a valuable conversation that all our viewers have enjoyed. I want to invite all our viewers to go ahead and send in your highlights of the discussions so that we know what were the highlights for you. And once again, uh, from Exchange for Media Group, we'd like to thank all our panelists and our session chair for coming out here and talking about the moments made by marketing in the finance sector. Thank you so much. And for all of you viewers, stay tuned for more insights on moments made, made by marketing in different sectors, different industries. It's an ongoing series sponsored by Salesforce, presented by Exchange for Media Group. So stay tuned to know more. Thank you so much. This is Khyati Kawai, your host, signing off. Have a very good evening, everyone. Thank you, Ronita, for Thank hosting you. us. Thank you very much. Wonderful session.